Camilla has decided to express her opinion about Kate Williams' reaction to the recent comments from Camilla has sparked intense discussions within the royal family. Their exchange of views has become a focal point and attracted interest in the personal lives of the prince and the queen. It is evident that their conflict has resurfaced. Camilla has dared to voice her thoughts on whether to leave the royal family or fully concentrate on her duties despite health issues. How can she think this way? First of all, why should she give advice on this matter at all? And second, she only found herself within the royal family by misunderstanding due to Charles's excessive sentimentality. William's emotional reaction to Camilla's words demonstrated that not everyone in the royal house is known for their calm demeanor. He did not take her statement lightly, and his response showed how strongly it affected him. This incident highlighted the fragility of internal family relations and illustrated how one comment can provoke a long-suppressed outburst. It is no surprise that Camilla's response has stirred significant discussions about the future of the monarchy and its internal relationships, raising questions about the roles of spouses in the royal family and the expectations placed upon them. Royal analysts are trying to understand the potential impact this event may have on the monarchy's future. Camilla as queen occupies a significant position, and William, the heir to the throne, is also involved in this situation, which implies possible consequences for the royal family. While we do not have complete information, it is clear that they will have to go through a serious trial. The global public will closely monitor the reactions of Prince William and Queen Camilla to this incident, as well as how it affects their positions within the royal family. This event could become a significant moment in the history of the monarchy. In families with considerable influence, conflicts and misunderstandings often arise. However, the tension between such important figures as William and Camilla may affect not only their personal connections, but also the overall perception of the monarchy in society. In fact, there are two possible paths. Either the royal family will become more open, transparent and democratic, or its existence may be jeopardized as the monarchy loses its appeal in the modern world. Scandals continue to erode the foundation of their position. Many people speculate that in the future, the royal family will become more open and accessible in its actions. They aim for the monarch and his team to communicate more often with the public and demonstrate the importance of responsibility and accountability. This could lead to new challenges for the royal family and possibly even to a closer bond among its members. As the potential king maintains strong ties with Camilla in both symbolic and practical aspects, they must learn to handle personal difficulties and present a united front to the public. After all, the royal family is always under close scrutiny. Journalists will continue to watch every move, looking for signs of tension or resolution of conflicts. Although it is challenging to predict what influence Camilla's or William's reactions will have, these events have already triggered a wave of emotions and concerns for both them and society at large. Ultimately, the stability of the royal family will depend on how they navigate the current circumstances. The monarchy, with its rich traditions of Stoicism, faces a challenge in finding harmony between established norms and modern realities. Previously, Personal feelings often remained hidden, but today they are expressed much more openly and frequently become subjects of public discussion. This is a significant change, and it will be interesting to see how the monarchy reacts. Perhaps this will lead only to minor disappointments, or it may open the door to more profound transformations that could change the very essence of this institution. Time will tell. History knows many cases where entire imperial dynasties that found themselves under pressure disappeared from the face of the earth, even when they were significantly more powerful than the British monarchy. Their power is not stable. It is torn apart by internal conflicts, disagreements, and scandals. We can only observe when their end will come. King Charles does not inspire enthusiasm among Australians. Australia is dealing a crushing blow to the monarchy and the reputation of King Charles, 
the royal tour has not yet begun but scandalous news has already started to emerge charles and camilla will begin their journey in sydney on october eighteen after which they will travel to the capital canberra for a meeting with high-profile politicians despite the fact that all state prime ministers in australia have received invitations there are six of them not one of them intends to meet charles and camilla at this event british media describes this situation as a slap in the face even before charles roman iii reaches the australian continent talks hinting at a lack of enthusiasm for the monarch have already begun it seems that he is not being awaited with joy and high hopes were placed on this visit primarily to demonstrate to the public that charles roman iii is not as bad as many think australian politician and monarchy supporter mac arth stated that all prime ministers and ministers have sworn loyalty to our monarch charles roman iii and it is a huge insult that they now disregard his friendly gestures he added that this is a unique opportunity to unite australia focus on charitable initiatives and benefit society nevertheless it seems our political figures are more interested in playing english politics this trip of the king serves only to dispel rumors and facilitate a journey to the other side of the world the king even had to temporarily suspend his treatment however it turns out that king charles is not particularly eager to meet with australian citizens and the evidence is telling none of the state governors will meet the royal couple at a special reception in canberra scheduled for october twenty one on that day the princess of wales is expected to return to a medical facility where her stay may last several days depending on the results of medical examinations the royal tour of australia is planned for nine days it was expected that king charles roman iii would participate in an event where high-ranking political and public figures as well as famous australians including well-known actors would gather however it seems the hall will only be half full many have already announced their refusal of the invitation meanwhile suspicious excuses have been received from state leaders some are involved in election campaigns others are busy with urgent matters and some have scheduled meetings with ministers and so on however the prime minister of new south wales chris minns will participate in several events attended by the king the prime minister of queensland stephen miles referred to his business stating he is occupied with his election campaign and cannot pay respects to the king while on the other side of the world roger cook representing western australia did not even bother to make up an excuse and simply informed buckingham palace of his refusal mr cook has other commitments his representative from south australia peter malinoskas will also be absent at the reception on october twenty one due to a local cabinet meeting scheduled in the region the prime minister of new south wales suggested meeting the king at a later date noting that the visit is not limited to one day and that as they say there will be enough time australia is not excited about the king according to the tabloids however things were quite different in 1983 when the continent was in complete awe during the first joint tour of princess diana and prince charles during this trip it became evident who from wales became the most popular figure all newspapers and magazines enthusiastically wrote about diana analyzing her image down to the finest details how charming she was how naturally she behaved and what magnetism she possessed camilla can hardly expect such a warm reception the refusal of key figures to participate in the meeting in canberra is a troubling signal for the monarchy perhaps it would be wise to send younger representatives of wales to australia however for now princess kate seems unprepared for long trips it is worth noting that she was recently on a wave of popularity after visiting Southport with Prince William. This visit was dedicated to the memory of the families of girls affected by the attack on a children's dance studio. Kate's image was carefully analyzed, emphasizing her restraint. 
she appeared in a long coat, which even her fern-shaped earrings were interpreted as a sign. In the language of flowers, a fern symbolizes both grief and fertility, protection and reassurance having many meanings. Of course, there were comparisons with Meghan Markle, who, unlike Kate, chose a fitted red dress with a deep neckline for a children's event. As for the king, the prime minister ironically is heading to the USA on a trade mission, while the state of Victoria decided to avoid a meeting and sends instead a secretary, which implies the use of a less significant person than the prime minister himself. According to sociological research, only data from public opinion specialists show optimism, while the real attitude towards the idea of independence in Australia remains low. Only 33% of respondents expressed support for full autonomy. How did it happen that the positive results of studies are inconsistent with the actual indifference to the monarchy? The king, who turned 75, is making his 17th visit to Australia. It was expected that this trip would strengthen ties and provoke thoughts about ecology. However, the Australian population is not particularly excited to greet the monarch. Britain has long lost its colonial possessions in significant parts of the world. Throughout the century, the process of gaining independence by many territories represented a continuous collapse of the empire. Australians have long regarded the British monarchy with coolness, highlighting their desire for independence and self-governance. Prime ministers show no signs of loyalty to the monarchy. Most citizens support the idea of their country becoming a republic. The king, who will visit Australia, is predicted to face demonstrations burning British flags and dismantling monuments to British monarchs such as George V, who facilitated Australia's independence from Britain, Queen Victoria and seafarer James Cook. Currently, only 40% of Australians recognize the British king as their head of state. The attitude towards Britain and the monarchy has steadily cooled. The King's Tour will be a powerful indicator of the monarchy's current standing in Australia. There are numerous factors that significantly influenced public opinion. Many believe that British royal traditions are outdated. As a result, the organization of the royal tour was thrown into chaos, as reports emerged indicating an impending protest against the King's visit. A significant part of the population intends to demonstrate against the monarchy and in the opinion of the demonstrators, the royal visit is intended to provoke discussions on the ecological situation. The locals seem unwilling to ignore the issue of Australian independence, which becomes even more significant every year. The public's emotional state is particularly influenced by the dark history of colonization, the invasion of British territories, and the suffering of indigenous peoples. As a result, the demands for a change in public sentiment are becoming louder. Many are waiting for Charles to answer uncomfortable questions about reparations and the overall impact of colonization on Australia. Social media is also stirring the pot, bringing together various opinions on the monarchy. The invitation from the Prime Minister of New South Wales to attend the reception and be present during the ceremony on October 21 was an attempt to save face for the royal family. However, the consequences of the tour may have significant implications for the monarchy's image in Australia, and it is difficult to predict whether it will be possible to smooth over the scandal. Both in Australia and in the UK, it has become clear that the royal family has lost public support. The monarchy's reputation has significantly declined, primarily due to Charles's previous attitude and his impact on Australia. Despite attempts to persuade people of the importance of the royal family, Australians remain indifferent. The timing of King Charles's visit is rather unfortunate, as his presence in Australia seems pointless. While he expects to enjoy his stay, locals have already decided that they do not want to be bothered by British royalty. This year, William and Kate are taking a back seat as they begin the next phase of their lives. With their children now in school and the royal family's challenges increasing, they have their sights set on establishing a new identity for the monarchy. However, it seems that their efforts will not be enough to rebuild the image of a monarchy. 
that is not aligned with the modern world? How will they respond to the lack of enthusiasm from Australians regarding the royal tour? What other ways will they have to regain lost support? The situation is reminiscent of many other cases in history where the royal family struggled to regain trust and loyalty, leading to gradual obsolescence in many ways. Thus, many are looking for signs of social unrest, which could lead to significant changes in Australia's governance and possibly even changes in the monarchy itself. Today's controversies highlight a potential turning point, not only for the monarchy but for the entire country. It is quite possible that the future of the royal family will depend on how they respond to current circumstances as they navigate the challenges posed by this unfolding drama. In the meantime, public discontent may give rise to political movements advocating for independence and a complete transformation of Australian governance. In conclusion, the royal family must be prepared to face the challenges posed by internal conflicts and public criticism. The survival of the monarchy will depend on their ability to adapt to modern society, acknowledge past mistakes, and take steps towards reconciliation and transparency. Only by doing so can they hope to restore their relevance and maintain a strong position in the hearts and minds of the people. These events are a vivid illustration of how the royal family must confront the realities of today, balance tradition and modernity, and seek to foster stronger connections with the public. The future of the monarchy remains uncertain, and the resolution of current conflicts will determine its fate in the years to come.